I, I, I knew Jack LaLanne in his later years, the godfather of fitness. And Jack used to say, he says, if it tastes good, spit it out. All right, friends, we are back with Dr. Stephen Gundry for part two of our show on the gut based on his book, Gut Check. Really excited to have him here for part two, where we're going to talk about how to work with your gut and kind of the signs of whether your gut is working or not working and so much more. I hope you enjoy. That gap is leaky gut intestinal permeability. Now, the interesting thing is this obviously happened a lot because on the other side of this single cell layer, 80% of our white blood cells, 80% of our immune system is sitting right there. Those are our warriors well, ready to fight. Exactly. That's because mischief is going to come through and they have to be ready. Now, that would be in the good old days and every now and then occurrence because we had this amazing offensive line front four of our microbiome that could take almost anything that was coming down the pipe and detoxify it, diffuse it, eat it. They're gone because of all the antibiotics that we have taken, all the antibiotics that we fed to our animals. That we've then Reason. taken through them. Yeah, that we get through them. Glyphosate Roundup was patented by Monsanto as an antibiotic, folks. It wasn't patented as a weed killer. And so, and glyphosate's in everything. Um, Reason article. What's from it in? Because I still haven't really done a lot of research on glyphosate. It's in everything. Like? It's in all of our oat products. Oat. It's in it, Oat, as in oat milk. Wow. My husband oh, oat loves milk. oat milk. Oh, geez. That's one of the biggest poisons known to mankind. Oh, wow. Wonderful. No wonder Plus, he's suffering. <laughs> there's another very interesting banned herbicide uh, in oats that is present in all oats in the United States, uh, thanks to the EPA uh, during the Trump administration relaxing the rule. And now all of our oat products test positive for this herbicide which uh, is uh, associated with cancer, among other things. Okay. But yeah, glyphosate's in everything. What else is it uh, in? So any fast food tested in the United States uh, tests positive for glyphosate. Okay. It's in uh, the vast majority of California wines. No uh, way. Yeah, it's in all conventional grain products, whether it's wheat, rye, barley, whether it's uh, canola, uh, it, soybeans, uh, corn, 95%. So you of, buy a piece of corn in the supermarket and there's glyphosate? Yeah. yeah. So what's been happening recently? 95% of all corn in the United States is genetically modified. It carries a protein called the CRY protein, C-R-Y. And we test that in our patients. And remarkably, um, most people react to the CRY protein. Do they cry? That's, yeah, they cry. That's, that's, that's how I use them. So, Man, my cheesy jokes. Continue. Yeah, that's, that's good. I like it. So glyphosate is kills off a lot of our gut microbiome. Interestingly enough, it kills off the tryptophan pathway microbiome specifically. That makes the feel-good hormones. And isn't it interesting that our increase in anxiety and depression correlates with two things, the introduction of Roundup and the introduction of broad spectrum antibiotics into us. Wow. Wow. Can we clip this out and send it to Kevin immediately? <laughs> <laughs> My husband needs to hear this. Okay, carry on. So what most people unfortunately don't know is that most glyphosate is not used, no, most Roundup is not used in genetically modified crops. Most is sprayed on conventional crops to make harvesting easier. It's used as a desiccant. A 
dead plant is easier to harvest than a living plant. Yeah, you can pull Plus, the blueberries off easier, right? No, not blueberries, but corn, okay. uh, wheat, oats. Um, these large factory farms, they, they've got multi-million dollar harvesters that need to be on one field on a particular day. And if weather isn't cooperating and the field's not ready, so what? You spray it with glyphosate, it's dead, boom. Uh, we're gonna harvest it that day. So most, and they don't go around washing the glyphosate off of these wheat, rye, barley, uh, corn, soybeans. They feed it to our animals. The animals pick up the glyphosate and the conventional, all these conventional foods are ground up and they're in our breads, they're in our oatmeals. Even organic oats have glyphosate in them. Every one of the fast food products tested by the Environmental Working Group has glyphosate in the product. And the number one, I won't even mention it's very popular. Uh, the last word ends in bread. So um, mm. I'll let you guess. With a P? Has the most glyphosate. Does it start with a P? Uh, it does start with <laughs> Yeah, it has the most tested glyphosate. Wow. Wow. So we're getting exposed to this without our knowledge. We don't, nobody has to put it on a label because the FDA says glyphosate is just fine because we humans don't use the shikimate pathway to have cellular reproduction. Plants do. But here's the bad news. Bacteria use the shikimate pathway to grow and reproduce. And nobody bothered to mention that. So sadly, uh, when we eat glyphosate containing foods, it kills the bacteria in our gut. So here's my question. How can the FDA allow that? Like, don't they have kids that they want to protect from this too? Uh, I've said this before and it gets me into trouble. Uh, sickness is good for business. Of course. It's really, it's really criminal. What, what is going on in our world? It's, it's unbelievable that we stand by and allow this. I don't know what the action is, but, but how, how, how is this even possible? I, I, I don't know. It's really frustrating. I mean, you have to like grow well, your own food now. You can't even go out to eat anymore. I I can't eat out because they're going to use a vegetable oil or a canola oil because food is expensive, prices have gone up, and they have to use a cheaper oil. I can't breathe. I literally can't breathe. I know when I've eaten out and I've gotten a cheap oil, I can't breathe after. It's probably all, you know, junk. Well, remember, uh, it's actually... The profit margin on ultra processed foods is actually much higher than on an unprocessed food, which seems odd, uh, but you can use far ch cheaper ingredients. Um, the, I mean, the history of how cottonseed oil came about is, is worth reading. Uh, it's, in, it's in my up next oh, book. But, well, remember they it, used to put asbestos in muffin filler and all of that. I did a whole story in Butte, Montana, I was 21 working for Channel One News, and I went to Butte, Montana because the entire town was being eradicated. Everybody was dying because they were using asbestos in everything, in their muffins, everything. I interviewed a girl, her entire family was wiped out by it. And so, I mean, we've done really crazy things over, over the years, I and mean, we've really strayed from Hippocrates time when we ate normal real food and you know the the body isn't designed to take in all of these toxins which is why we're having so many issues right yeah uh, I I trained at the University of Michigan um, in surgery and in children's heart surgery there is a city in Michigan that I won't mention uh, that a very large pharmaceutical company, uh, a chemical company, is based. And we knew that the vast majority of our congenital heart defects happened to come out of the city. And it was 
good for, good for business if you were training to be a congenital heart surgeon because all of these malformed hearts would come out of the city and it just so happened to be the site of a rather important chemical plant wow. and we knew it uh did we you know march on that company and say stop doing this no should we have maybe um but we, yeah we know these connections wow wow what a depressing day um so <laughs> so the gut is is sensitive and beautiful and complex how we do are we... yeah we're we're a symbiotic organism um many of us joke that the only reason we exist is to carry around this five to six pounds of a hundred trillion microbes we're kind of their transportation so and, how do we work with our microbiome ah that's that's the great question i talk about it a lot in the book you've you mentioned our our ancestors ate whole foods and more importantly they ate those foods whole now what's happened is when we ate whole foods and ate them whole we would absorb you know, sugars out of that we would absorb amino acids proteins out of that and we would absorb fats but there would actually be a lot left over that we didn't absorb or we couldn't break down which would be left over for the gut microbiome and they would ferment it uh, fun fact Believe it or not, no animal, no animal can digest the cell wall of a plant. Fun fact. Wow. Not even a termite can digest the cell wall of a plant. The termite has to have a gut microbiome to do the job of getting through that cell wall of the plant. Wow. So, yeah. So... In the good old days, there was lots of soluble fiber left over for the gut microbiome to get what they want to produce all these incredible compounds among the short chain fatty acids like butyrate, all these cool gasotransmitters like hydrogen gas that would tell our mitochondria how to behave, that would tell our brain how to behave, that would keep cancer cells at bay. But now with ultra processing or processed foods, we have complete gotten rid of all that stuff that the microbiome had to have. So we've killed it with antibiotics. We've starved it to death. And it's no wonder that we're in, you know, the shape we're in. So you gotta you gotta give them what they want. And the book is all about how to, you know, eat for them. Uh, I'll tell you one other funny story that my folks tell me never to say. Uh, I, I knew Jack LaLanne in his later years, the godfather of fitness. And Jack used to say, he says, if it tastes good, spit it out. Now, and, and people go, no, don't say that. They'll think your book you know, doesn't taste good. I said, no, that's not actually what he was saying. He's saying, don't let this two by three inch piece of muscle, your tongue, guide your food selections. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eat for your microbiome. And it's if you fuel. eat for yeah, eat for them, they'll take care of you. That their job, this is this is the only home you and I will ever have, but it's also the only home your microbiome was is ever gonna have. And if you give them what they need they will be more than happy to take care of you because the longer you're around the better for them so is fermented are fermented foods your best source of natural probiotics no okay tell me about that, that that's the biggest bunch of hooey there is so no so, sauerkraut none of that no i didn't say that okay but, Fermented foods are not a source of important probiotics. 
they are important sources of postbiotics. They are basically the material, the probiotics produce, eat sugars, and they produce what are now called postbiotics. And they produce a lot of dead bacteria. I have a chapter in the book that says, dead men t tell no tales, but dead bacteria do. Most of the probiotics that we eat in these foods, if they were alive, and most of them aren't, are killed by stomach acid. So they never make it into the gut. But dead bacteria carry important signaling messages. And the postbiotics that fermented foods make are incredible. Plus, fermentation is one of the best ways to activate polyphenols, these incredibly important compounds that are, are the dark colors in fruits and vegetables. So fermentation is incredibly important, but not for the reason people think. So you just said something, and it made me realize, embarrassingly enough, that I don't even know where my gut is exactly. Because you said it goes into the stomach, the acid kills it, and, and it doesn't make it to the gut. Where exactly is the gut? I thought the gut was in the stomach. Well, your gut, believe it or not, starts in your mouth and nose. That's the beginning of your gut. Goes through the swallowing tube, the esophagus, then goes into an acid-containing pouch, the stomach, and then is emptied into the absorptive part of the gut, which is the duodenum, the small intestine, and the colon. That's why it so, might be two tennis courts wide. Exactly. Oh, see, I was trying, I'm like, how's the stomach two tennis courts? I don't get that, or even one. It's, it's a huge surface area. Wow. Believe it or not, our intestines are basically a shag carpet. And there's all these little, what are called villi and microvilli. And it's all that surface area that makes it literally a tennis court of surface area. Wow. Okay. Because yeah. I know we've talked with different doctors on the show about the gut-brain uh, connection and that they're all in that same you know, streamline. And, and so one of the things we have to realize that I guess we should have known is the gut is not the second brain. The gut is the first brain. And the brain up here is merely getting information from the first brain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So if fermented foods are better postbiotics, what are the good prebiotics? So a lot of fermented foods are great prebiotics. And so for instance, cabbage is, a, is, you know, like sauerkraut or kimchi is a great prebiotic. I am a big fan of prebiotic fiber, like inulin. Inulin is present in radicchio and the chicory family. Um, present in artichoke hearts, it's present in asparagus, that's a good source. There's lots of prebiotic fiber in tubers, like jicama, like sweet potatoes, like cassava. So also good prebiotic fibers. Oh yeah, because there's prebiotic and then there's probiotic and then there's postbiotic. Post Wait, so that was the confusion. Okay, so what about probiotic? Well, so probiotics, um, there are some interesting probiotics that I talk about in Gut Check. I'm a big fan of one of the keystone species called Acromancia mucinophila, mucus-loving Acromancia, uh, which we're beginning to realize is really important in our gut. We're beginning to realize that a lot of short-chain fatty acid-producing bacteria uh, are incredibly important for our long-term health. The key with these bacteria is that they have to have um, prebiotic fiber to make these important postbiotics. And without that prebiotic fiber, they won't make it. But the real catch of all this is you also have to have preformed postbiotics to kind of super supercharge the whole process. Very it's basically a, an assembly line down in our gut. You <sighs> you may need we may want this incredible short chain fatty acid called butyrate, which is the holy grail of postbiotics. 
But to make butyrate, we probably need four or five different bacteria. Each guy has to eat something and then, if you will, poop out something that the second guy needs to make a poop that the third guy needs to eat, that the fourth guy needs to eat, so that the final guy can make butyrate. Okay, so this is very confusing for the every person. Does that mean I have to eat radicchio or asparagus at every sitting and first before I eat any of the other foods? How do I do this? No, one of the things that's important, I think, for most of us is to get fermented foods easily into our diet. One of the easy ways is vinegar. Vinegar is a fermented food, and most people don't know that I'm the father of the fake Coke which was balsamic vinegar and sparkling water. I was the first to release a video on that a billion years ago. Wait, I've never heard this. You mix balsamic with sparkling water and make a drink? With San Pellegrino, yeah. And how much balsamic? Oh, about a tablespoon. And and doesn't it rot your teeth? No. No, it's a delicious drink. You only need it once or twice a day. Okay. We amaze friends at restaurants and where we'll order a bottle of San Pellegrino and say, bring over the balsamic vinegar and we'll no, all sit there and drink it. No, you don't. And the waiters go, oh, that's cool. Let and me, what about apple cider? Yeah, you can do that too. So interesting because I've also heard vinegars are bad now. Vinegars are the greatest things that ever were invented. <sighs> it's so confusing. The, they are the ultimate short chain fatty acids that you have to have to prime this assembly line and it's all in gut check i've been hearing so many bad things about vinegars that i went back to lemons for my salad dressings lemons are one of the you wouldn't believe the number of people in my patient population who have sensitivities igg antibodies to lemons it shocked me wow Uh, So I'll only order limes now. Okay, well, I'm going to try your Coke. I think that's hilarious because I love vinegar. I've been an addict. I I have had teeth issues, like like staining at the roots of my teeth from, there was a point where for a month and a half I was eating, when I was starting to eat in a certain order where I was eating my greens before protein and fat, I was eating in the order for my endocrine Mm -hmm. system to be happy. I was eating salads at every sitting, Dr. Gundry, with- Great with apple cider vinegar, not knowing I needed to brush my teeth after each time. And then a month and a half later, I had been at the dentist, my teeth were perfect. A month and a half later, I'm going to stand up to cancer to appear on the show. And I see my teeth at the roots are all brown. And I thought I was dying. I'm like, something horrible is happening because your teeth and your mouth show you what's going on in your gut. And I'm like, oh my God, I must be dying. And turns out I realized the only thing that I've been doing differently was I was eating salads at every meal with a lot of apple cider vinegar. Hmm. Interesting, right? Were you drinking any green tea? Yeah, I had green tea too. My uh, dental hygienist just loved me to drink green tea all day because then they get to have a good time taking all the stains out of my teeth. Oh, fascinating. Okay. Does matcha tea work the same? It's yeah. all green. Okay. I'll have more matcha tea. Um, but make sure it's from Japan, not China. Oh, matcha from Japan. Okay. Why? Uh, a lot of arsenic and matcha from China. Wait, don't we have really bad spices because they come from China and they have arsenic in it too? Well, not necessarily. You kind of know where they're coming from. Okay. Which spices do you like? Oh, that's a whole chapter in the book. Oh, I didn't see that in here. You had a whole spice chapter in here? Yep. Oh, perfect, because I've been wanting to know about that. Why do you think why do you think the spice trade was so lucrative? People only die, risk death for drugs. And the spice trade was the equivalent of the drug trade back in the Middle Ages. Spices were the drugs of that time. Wow. Fascinating. Okay. So you have all the gut check eating cycles and food plans in the book. Um, I'm curious, 
what other research are you passionate about right now? Because you did mention there's another book on the way. So what's kind of the next thing you're tackling? Um, what's fascinating to me, uh, again, for 25 years, I'm trying to figure out how Hippocrates knew all this. Because he was Greek. Did. Dr. Gundry, duh. We know everything. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I, I've got a a Buddhist scholar who's one of my patients. Uh, and when we were talking about this one day, he said, you know, I went back and you know, the Buddha was a, a contemporary of Hippocrates. And he said, interestingly enough, the Buddha in Sanskrit said that enlightenment comes from the gut. And yeah. And you go. Whoa. So uh, the next book is actually how, in more ways than you could possibly imagine, that the gut controls our brain. Um, in, in more ways than you can possibly imagine. Interesting. Um, it's these single cell organisms, to kind of get back to how we started this hour, uh, are as strange as it seems, sentient beings that are capable of manipulating this large creature. And for good or bad. For good or bad, correct. Uh, and that's uh, the next book. And how to make sure that you got the right guys sending the right messages rather than the wrong guys sending the wrong messages. Okay, I have to ask you one last thing. Knowing everything you know, how do you live your life every day without constantly being like, oh, mm, uh, uh, can't do this, can't do that, oh, can't eat out here, can't eat there, can't take this, can't do that. It feels like everywhere we turn, it's a no. So how do you live your everyday life with so much knowledge? Because your understanding of it is far deeper than ours. We're just kind of exploring and getting into it and it seems overwhelming i can only imagine how it feels when you know as much as you do well knowing as much as i do uh the good news is that i can turn around very quickly any insult that i do uh because i've got a pretty doggone good gut microbiome and i can get a pretty good fall of the gut but I can prove on myself that uh, a long weekend of eating really bad foods in my gut, in my book, can produce anti-nuclear antibody. I'll make it. And I can prove that in a week of eating perfectly, that anti-nuclear antibody will be turned off in me. I have other patients who it can take us six months, nine months, a year to turn off their anti-nuclear antibody with really good eating. How do you know if you've turned it off? Is it a blood test? It's a blood test. Got it. And how do you know without a blood test how your gut microbiome is working? Well, some people, uh, first of all, women, you guys luckily understand uh, gut instincts. And you guys are... and. Don't get me wrong. I have a wife and two daughters and three female dogs. So you guys, <laughs> you guys are much more in tune yeah. with your gut, and you know that's it's true. And so, I, and uh, sadly, uh, the vast majority of autoimmune diseases occur in women, and it's you guys luckily feel a lot of this. A number of my patients know full well. I mean, it sounds like you. You go into a restaurant and you know something's amiss, right? Mm -hmm. So you're you're in touch with this. Other people are not so lucky, but we'll show it to them on their blood tests, and then they can see literally how they're doing um, with progressive blood tests. And then it occurs to them as they see this, they go. You know, you're right. I used to, you know, I used to be achy or I used to be in a bad mood all the time or I wasn't sleeping well. And, you know, gosh, you're right. I, I'm not noticing those things anymore. Yeah. Or you're not, uh, you're bloated, right? Yeah. 
bloating. And what about the bathroom cycle? Should we be going to the bathroom after every meal if our gut mm-hmm. is working? No? No. Once a day is fine. Really? But if you're if you're really eating 50 to 100 grams of fiber every day, which is really hard to do, uh, you may go twice a day. And, but you're supposed to, when you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to look in the toilet and see a giant coiled snake. And a coiled not, snake? Coiled snake. You know, it can't like be a, a long big, snake? Uh, a long snake. Um, <laughs> when I wrote The Plant Paradox, I actually said... You should see. It. You should look into the toilet and see an anaconda looking back up at Hilarious. you. And my editor said, "Ah, uh, and that was back when you know, snake on a plane was, uh, and there was an anaconda in the toilet in the plane." She said, "We're not going to use that visual, okay? Just say snake." <laughs> I love poop. My friend and I used to take pictures of our poop because we'd be so proud of it when it was an anaconda. We're like, "Look, I got one!" <laughs> yeah, that's so you know, funny. This, yeah, so, yeah, you should see a big anaconda in the ball. All right, well, what a great way to end this episode. Let's see an anaconda in the toilet bowl. Um, so many amazing, amazing... But don't, but don't post it on Instagram, folks. Yeah, <laughs> don't put it on Insta, but definitely share don't, it with your TikTok. bestie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that wraps out our two-part series on Gut Check with Dr. Stephen Gundry. I hope that there was some valuable information in there for you. If you haven't read his book, The Plant Paradox, I think you'll really enjoy learning about lectins. He mentioned those in the episode, but we've covered that in a previous episode. You can go back to that episode in the library easiest way will probably to go to be to go to healsquad.com where we have all the verticals there for the different ailments you're dealing with and if you go in there you can find his episode a lot faster than if you just scroll through apple podcast but if you go to apple podcast don't forget to leave us a review um if you have anything negative to say please please share it with us in a different way because sometimes people say really love the show it's amazing but i didn't like this one thing and they give us a one rating and tank it so um thank you to all the people who are sharing all the positive feedback and we love feedback and we will make adjustments but share them with us like in a dm or something um because it really hurts us in our ability to do what we do here so thank you for that and in the meantime be nice people make good choices and be present This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menounos or mariamenounos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare care program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.